Ooh, it's an exciting one. It's that feature we've all been waiting for. Finally, we have Udims inside a substance painter. We can paint across Udims. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. So a lot of you that I'm sure have used Painter before in the VFX industry have been begging for this for ages. We had texture sets before, which were a workaround. You had to use instances and stuff like that, but it was a bit of a nightmare. But now we have fully functional. You can paint across different UDIMs. It's great. So I'm here in this video to explain how they work, why they're really useful, and also a couple of caveats that I found using them myself. So who am I and why is this important to me? Well, my name is Michael Wilde, I'm a visual effects artist, and I've textured and modeled on multiple films, including Alita Battle Angel, and here you can see Screwhead, the character I worked on at DNEG. Weta did most of it, and we did it in a couple of sequences. And we ended up using substance on a lot of those characters because they were so, because of so much hard surface detail on them, and it just didn't make sense to hand paint all that detail, so using procedurals and using materials really sped up the workflow. However, without UDIMs, because some of that asset, I think was about 60 UDIMs at the time, it was a nightmare not being able to paint across the Udim tiles, and so I ended up having to take a lot of those details into Mari to do the more hand painted detail. So being able to keep assets like that inside a substance might be a bit of a game changer. So we're inside a substance, and the first thing we need to do is make a new project. So if I just close this, I'm gonna to go to File New, as you usually would do, and there's very little that's changed with Udims. All you need to do, just select your geo like I was doing. And I've got this object here. I'm just gonna import this. And now you can see we've got this Use UV Workflow checkbox. Uh, which is turned on at the moment, and you can see we've got two options. So we've got this one underneath, which is convert UV tiles into individual texture sets, which is the old way of doing things, or this new version, which is preserve UV tile layout per material and enable painting across tiles. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to paint across tiles. So I'm going to click OK on that, and it's going to bring in my mesh. And if you ever watch Bob's Burgers, you may recognize this model. Wait, why will civilization break down? Have you been to the post office lately? She knows. That's right, I know. I've got my split. 2D and 3D view here, and you can see that we've now got UDIMs inside of Substance, which is awesome. And on the right hand side, in my texture set list, we've also got this initial shading group, which is just the material that I had assigned inside of Maya. And we've got the four UV tiles that align up with this. So before doing anything in Substance, what I need to do is I want to bake my objects. Let's get the mesh maps for that. So I don't have a high poly for this object, so I'm just going to do it normally. Um, but we've got this new option up here. We've got this UV set slash UV tiles. And if I click on this, you can see that we've got our four UV tiles. So if I wanted to just do 1002 to 1004, then I can do that by turning them on and off. And then everything else is basically the same. So I'm actually going to leave everything by default. I'm going to hit it up to 1024 and we're just going to bake that. I don't need ID. And it's going to take a second to compute, but if you've ever used texture sets before its old kind of way of using UDIMs, then this is nothing new to you. And you will see that that's baked. So if we have a look at our project window now, you can see that it's slightly different. And here on my right hand side, under mesh maps, we've got this number four, which is telling me that we've got four UDIMs baked for this normal map, four UDIMs baked for the world space normal, and so on and so forth. So let's quit the foreplay. Let's get to the main thing, the thing that we're all here for, which is painting across texture sets. Uh, so if I add just a new fill layer, what I'll do is I'm just going to bring this back up and I'm going to make this bright red. And if I add a black mask, you will see that I am now able to paint across these multiple UDIMs and I can do it in the 3D views or the 2D view. And you see that's working. So not a particularly exciting example here, just this stylized character that I've sculpted. But if we take a look at this old camera model that I did the series on previously, because I wasn't able to paint across UDIMs, then I had to cheat it with the instancing, but you can't instance masks. So it made it really difficult to paint these logos that I'm now doing here in one individual mask. I don't have to cheat with instancing and stuff like that. And it's a lot quicker. And it also means that all the edits can be done in one single mask layer, rather than having to find all the different ones across different texture sets and all that stuff. It was an absolute nightmare. So this really is a game changer and it's gonna speed up workflows so much. So I'm very, very happy about it. Obviously there's a lot of other things that I don't love in substance, but this was the big one that it was missing and it is gonna make it more viable in a VFX industry environment. One other feature that's new in this UDIM update with Substance is we've now got UDIM masking. So on the right hand side, you can see we've got this three by three grid. And if I click on it, it basically means that I can mask out certain UDIMs for different layers. So if I click here, you will see that I'm now in the selection mode if I zoom out on my 2D view or inside of the 3D view, I can do it as well. And if I click here, it will stop that layer computing whatever's going on in that layer for that specific UDIM that I've masked out. So if I turn off this clay shader kind of height map that I've got going on on the dress area here. And then if I go back, I can click to 
go out of selection mode, I can click back on the layer and you'll see that that's no longer inside of that UDIM. I can also right click here and go include or exclude. So if I exclude, it will now not show on any UDIM and I can right click and you can see now it's got that zero implying that there's zero UDIMs it's affected. If I go include all, then it will turn back on. I'm gonna add a new paint layer here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it off on the dress. So if I go click on that and it's now not gonna compute on that layer. And the reason I'm gonna do that is to show something that's important to know that while it may not show, doesn't mean that it's not happening there. So I'm gonna just paint some strokes all over the body. And then what I'll do is if I show this layer again, you'll see that that stroke data is actually there. So this is useful if you wanna make your scenes a little bit quicker or you don't wanna compute information on every single UDIM at once, but be aware that that stroke data is there if you re-enable that UDIM. As long as you keep that mask enabled, it won't show when you export those textures. So speaking of which, let's export some UDIM textures. So if I go to my file, export textures, and if we load up our export menu, then if we go to our output templates, which is usually where you decide how the naming conventions of your exported textures are. So this is the old format I used to use because I used to use texture sets instead of UDIMs. So now instead of this dollar texture set, we can just use this um, wildcard for dollar UDIM and then that will just pick up the UDIM number and place it at the end. And then you can load that into Arnold or whatever you're rendering and it will nicely, you can see here, so I've got curl underscore 1003, curl underscore 1004 and so forth with all my different maps um, just by using that dollar UDIM wildcard and that will export properly. Let's just talk about one little caveat that confused me when I first started using UDIMs inside of Substance. Um, and this is coming at it from a VFX artist. So if you're using it for games art, maybe this is something you're familiar with, but for VFX, I was a little bit stumped. So I, you can see here, I've got this object and it's called one material. And that's because inside of Maya, I just applied a blend to everything and exported it. However, Substance likes to work with its texture sets per material. So what I've got here is I've got a skin material that I've assigned to the objects that would be skin. And I've got one for clothes. And then I've just got another default, which is everything else. So I'm gonna import that version where it's exported with those materials. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take the naming convention from the shading group inside of Maya. And so I've now got one texture set for clothes, one for just General Louise, and then one for skin. So I can enable and disable. And you can see that, which is great. But you can also see these UV tiles have started doubling up. So I've got 1002 twice here. So if I were to bake, let's just go all the way down to my bake mesh. And if I go to my selection, which before just had the four UV tiles, which I'm using, I've now got 1002 twice. So if I hit OK, if I go over to my projects tab here, you can see I've actually got six bakes because there's two UV tiles, even though there's just four UDIMs. So why do I not love this when I initially see it? Well, because the way Substance saves its files, if you bake anything, it actually saves it within the file, which is why they often get really big. So when I was working on Detective Pikachu, some of those files got to between 10 and 20 gigabytes because the bakes were 8K. And then you start layering stuff on and it can take half an hour, genuinely half an hour to save a file or to export stuff. So the idea of potentially doubling up on data really scared me, but I have had a look. I had a quick save of this file versus one with only one texture set, but with the same amount of UDIMs. And it actually looks like the bakes are exactly the same in size and I'm guessing because they use alphas on just the bits that are being baked in that specific texture set. Obviously there's one plus because I can just quickly drag and drop even quicker rather than having to mask stuff out into these texture sets and then I can get some very quick textures going on without the need to mask but to me the pros don't outweigh the cons and also when you go to export it appears that it only exports the texture sets separately there doesn't appear to be a way to combine them if there is please leave a message for me in the comment section because i'd really like to know that actually but i've had a quick look around it doesn't appear as if that's an option which to me just seems bizarre to say the least like stupidly bizarre i'm just going to round off the video with that so yeah that's the end of this video about the new udim functionality inside of Substance. I'm changing my opinion quite dramatically in lockdown on Substance. There's still a lot it's lacking and still some things that Mari is needed for, but um, who's to say what the future holds? Anyway, take it easy. I've been Michael Wilde. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below or head over to the Discord server. Link is in the description to post your work and stuff like that. Cool. Take it easy. Have a good one. Bye.